Welcome out to Dirty Story Night. We have a new story from Scrooge McFuck on the Disney theme. Apologies very much to Scrooge. Uh, it was my error. I did not hit record on the Zoom meeting for his original reading, but he graciously re-recorded it for us. I hope you enjoy. Hello, my name is Scrooge McFuck, and this is my story. I call it Disneyland. With a signature on the end of a long stack of paperwork, it was done. Michael Eisner was no longer CEO of Disney. Bob Iger's coup was successful. Eisner felt empty. He put his heart and his soul into this company. He rescued it from bankruptcy. He fought off hostile takeovers. And to be rewarded with what? Getting thrown under the bus to appease Steve Jobs? Fuck Pixar, Eisner thought as he sealed the brown manila envelope and left it on his desk of his now former office. He took the monorail back to his Disney World apartment. This was his last night here. It was time to pack up his things and tend to his final errands. As he puts his clothes into a suitcase and arranges for U-Haul to pick up his furniture, he breaks down. His routine's interrupted. He plays some Hawthorne Heights. There really wasn't much left to do anyway. Maybe just one final errand. He slinked off the puddle of tears on his bed and went over to the closet door. After typing a code into the keypad, the closet door opened. A draft wafted through the door. Dust settled. Down the closet was a long path of stairs. Michael Eisner descended step after step until he reached his destination at the bottom. The Disney Vault. Amongst the unsold Song of the South VHS tapes and unedited Mary Poppin film reels, the ones that still feature where the scene the scene where Dick Van Dyke masturbates for two hours was a tall glass cylinder. Frost coated the outer walls. Next to it was a keypad. He dials in another code. The cylinder lifts, revealing a pedestal with Walt Disney's frozen head. As the head thaws, it comes to life and looks straight at Eisner. It speaks. What is thy bidding, my young apprentice? Michael Eisner breaks down in tears. Master, I have failed you as both a student and a lover. Bob Iger's coup is successful. I fear Disney may be at the end. It is not at the end, Walt Disney's severed head says. We must complete the ritual. We must become one. You know what to do. Michael Eisner lifts Walt Disney's severed head off the pedestal and presses it to his groin. Walt Disney's severed head begins licking and kissing, eventually using his tongue to unzip Eisner's pants. Eisner's pants fall down to his ankles, and Walt Disney's severed head begins sucking on Michael Eisner's erect penis. After a few minutes, Michael Eisner builds to climax and ejaculates inside the mouth of Walt Disney's severed head. As Walt Disney's severed head swallows the cum, it drips out the bottom of his neck hole. Feeling satisfied, Walt Disney says, Now, my student, we must combine. Michael Eisner places Walt Disney's head on the floor. His head opens its mouth, wide, tall enough to fit a person in. Michael Eisner climbs inside Walt Disney's mouth. The cheeks push out to the side to accommodate Michael Eisner as Walt Disney slurps and swallows Michael Eisner whole. After a moment, the head grunts. From the bottom of the neck begins extruding a new body. The head lifts up into the air as the body becomes whole. After a moment, it is apparent that Walt Disney now has a new body, and he is going to use this body to rape and fuck his way back up to the top of his company, the company that he and Michael Eisner rightfully deserve to run. The end. It's All Been Done presents Who's Got the Time?